Today, we're going to build a Blazing Fast CMS using Strapi. Welcome to Symptoms Tutorials. After setting up your Strapi project, go to the Content Type Builder and create a new type. Uh, this is going to be our categories and we're going to add a new field of type text. Uh, that's going to be the name of the category and then another one of type media which is going to be the icon of the category. Hit save and wait for the server to restart. Now we're going to create a few collections. Uh, this one is the products so we'll give it the name of the product and another field for the description then another one for the uh, material of the product now uh, this is going to be a number field of type uh, decimal for the price uh, let's create another one for the rating of the product which is also going to be decimal Now the, pro the product has an image, it's going to be a type single, single media and finally a JSON field for the colors. If you made any typos you can go back to the fields and correct them or change the type of the field and so on. Now hit again save and wait for the server to restart. And let's create a final collection type, that's the order. Uh, again, it's the same process, just a few fields. It is important to uh, select the correct number format, especially for the uh, for the price and the rating. Same thing for the total price, it has to be a decimal. Now, a great option of Strapi is the relation field. Uh, for example, here every user can have many orders. The type of the relation is also pretty important. Now let's go back to the category and add the relation between the category and the products so that a category can have multiple multiple products and every product can have multi, uh, multiple categories uh, as you can see if we go to the products we can see the relation with the categories Before creating our first category, we should start by uploading our media. So let's start by uploading the images and the icons. You can find those in the link in the description. You can also upload your own assets if you want. Now let's go to the category and add a new one. Let's just uh, give it the name, for instance, beds. Uh, let's select the bed icon. Cool, let's save this and also don't forget to publish your changes, otherwise it's not going to be available on the API. Uh, I'm going to run through these very fast, 
So you just have an idea about how to do it. Feel free to add your own categories and your own images and icons. Uh, this is uh, completely up to you. Just don't forget to publish all of your changes. Now let's create our products. Uh, as you can see, I don't really like the view, so you can change the layout by drag and dropping. Uh, you can drag the fields uh, to the placement that you want. Again, this is completely up to you. You can create any product that you want. Uh, we're not really selling these, so this is up to you. Now, the colors field is interesting, I think. Uh, this is just a JSON code. So we create a colors, uh, a colors array, and add some hexadecimal small colors to it. Don't forget to set the product category. Hit save and then publish. Cool. Now we're going to add a few a few products and just as for the categories you can follow along or just create your own Awesome. Now open the project in your favorite IDE. As you can see, you have many options, many things that you can change, such as the routes, the controllers, the models, the services. This is this is where you can change a lot of stuff. If you go to the package.json, you can see the packages that are installed by default. For, for now, we're going to add Stripe, Stripe.js, so just uh, run the yarn add Stripe. And once it's installed, you can see it in the package JSON. Now, let's go to the order and override the default controller. We're going to start by importing Stripe. Uh, we're gonna require Stripe and give it the uh, Stripe key. Uh, you can get your you can get your Stripe API key from from the link in the description. Now inside the model uh, the module exports, we're gonna override the default create method. So now let's declare our variables. So this is your address, the amount, the product, uh, the postal code, the payment method ID, uh, and finally the city. We're going to get these from the context um, request body. Then let's declare another variable, another constant. That's the DB product. Uh, we're actually gonna get the product from the uh, from the Stripe database. Uh, sorry, is this Strapi database? So we're gonna run Strapi query, 
uh, we're gonna search in products and find one uh, you have to give it the product ID uh, you can also search by other things but the product ID I think is uh, unique so you're not gonna get multiple products then we check if the product is not null and then we create the stripe payment intent uh, it takes a few very close to so you can you can check the stripe the stripe documentation uh, if you want to have more depth uh, more in-depth information by the way I also have roosters in my backyard so sorry for the noise yeah it seems like they are very happy As you can see, the amount is the DB product price multiplied by the amount and multiplied by 100. That's because the default, the default price is expressed in cents. Uh, another important thing is the description. Uh, you, you will be able to see that in the Stripe dashboard. In order to have error handling, we're gonna wrap this inside the try method. So, uh, if the payment intent was created successfully, we're gonna try to create the order inside the Strapi inside the Strapi database. So, we're gonna run Strapi dot services dot order dot create. We need to give it values for the fields that we created in the dashboard. So this is going to be the user, the address, the amount, the product, the postal code, the city, and the total the total price. Uh, again, total price is the DB product the price multiplied by amount. Here we don't have to multiply it by a hundred. Uh, I like to console log the order just to see what's happening and then we can return a status 200 and a message saying that the order was created successfully uh, we can also return the order ID and other information about the order if we want Then if something happened during the creation of the order, uh, we're gonna catch the error and console log that and return an error message with status 400. I'm just going to say that the uh, order was not created, uh, like failed to create order, something like that. We can give the user more information if we want. Uh, we can. We need to also catch the uh, potential errors while creating the Stripe payment intent. So we can catch the error, console log. We're gonna return a status code this time uh, that we get from the Stripe error. And also the message, uh, we're gonna get it from the error. You can find all of these inside the uh, Stripe documentation. Uh, if you want to go more in depth into that, basically that's pretty much it. Uh, as you can see, after saving the file, the server has restarted, and yeah, you can go to the dashboard, and everything, uh, everything works. You're not gonna notice any uh, changes right now, as this is more in the API side of things. I think we're gonna stop here for today. Our next step will be to create the API in Flutter, then create the API services and then keep it together. We'll get a working app that has all of the basic features for an e-commerce app. So feel free to add and experiment with that as you wish. Remember to follow me on social media and you're going to find all of the files and documentation in the link in the description.